Hey guys, day with First Place Auto Parts. We're out in the shop today. We're getting wrenching on the Chevelle behind me. And one of the things that we're getting ready to do is we're getting ready to install a full wheel disc brake conversion kit on this car. Now, when you buy a full wheel disc brake conversion kit or a rear disc brake conversion kit, what you have are two options. One is you can get it with or you can get it without a rear parking brake. And in today's video, what we're gonna do, because we get a lot of questions about this, guys, is how do I adjust that rear parking brake? Look, it's not quite as straightforward as just turning some nuts on the cable. It's not hard either. And in today's video, we're gonna show you how to adjust the rear parking brake on a caliper that's included in several of our four-wheel disc brake conversion kits made by the Right Stuff Brake Company. So stay tuned today, guys. We're gonna show you how to adjust this thing without taking this arm off. I'm gonna give you a little teaser here. A lot of people, there's some videos out there that show you that you have to take this arm off, you don't. So watch this video to better understand how to adjust your rear parking brake on your four-wheel disc brake conversion kit. Hey guys, if you like today's video, please consider subscribing to the First Place Auto Parts YouTube channel. We're gonna continually be adding new videos every week where we show you how to put new parts on, we take a look at the latest parts that are available, and we go to some pretty cool car guy stuff I'm pretty sure you're gonna to wanna to see. So before we get started, there's a couple of things that we have to go over. And the first thing is, is that when you adjust your parking brake, you're gonna to wanna to do this actually installed on your car. You're gonna want the caliper installed on the axle or on the, on the mounting brackets. You're gonna want your brake pads in and you're gonna want your rotor on. Now I suggest you put a lug nut to hold your rotor square against the axle flange so that we get a true reading when we're adjusting this parking brake. The other thing is, is that we wanna make sure that we do this dry. We don't wanna hook up the brake lines and start the bleeding process and then go adjust the parking brake. We need to adjust this thing dry. So like I said, we wanna make sure we have this thing fully installed on our vehicle, no emergency brake cable installed on our actual arm itself, and that we don't have any fluid in, in the actual caliper. So then we're gonna go ahead and get started. And really, what you need is a simple set of tools, or tool, I should say. It's a pair of vice grips, guys. Now, there are some videos out there that show you that you have to remove this brake arm to adjust this thing, and you don't. The whole idea here is that the inboard pad, the way that GM designed this brake caliper, and this thing has been in use for a long time. It's very robust, it works very well, but it's supposed to have a certain amount of drag on this rotor. And what happens is we have to adjust this arm here to get that piston adjusted properly to get that inboard pad close to the rotor. As a matter of fact, GM calls for roughly 30 foot pounds of actual drag on that thing. It's, it's not, we're not gonna be able to measure that, of course, but what we will do is we'll make sure that we have that thing adjusted all the way. And it, it quite honestly, what's beautiful about this caliper is that it's impossible to over adjust it. There's a limiter inside this thing. And the way it works is it has a helix screw that as you apply the emergency brake and you apply this brake arm, basically that piston rotates and pushes out. So it's pretty straightforward, but the first thing we're gonna wanna do, guys, is we're gonna wanna go ahead and put our vice grips on the actual arm itself. And make sure you have this, this vice grip on here pretty tight, <clears throat> because what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be going through a series of activating the emergency brake and letting it snap back. We're not gonna let it just fall back, but we want it to snap back. That action is actually what adjusts that piston outboard to give us the correct drag on the rotor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull on this, this vice grip, and I'm gonna go ahead and let it drop back and snap back, much like it would snap back if you were to release the parking brake cable on your modern vehicle, right? <clears throat> you don't typically put your foot on the parking brake pedal and release the thing. You, you actually just pull the handle, you hear that thing snap, and that's what it's doing. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this, let it snap back, and we're gonna do this about 10 to 15 times. And as, as we do that, what you're gonna find is that brake pad and that piston on the inside of this caliper is gonna start to push out as that helix screw inside starts to rotate. We're gonna keep doing this, and we're gonna see that as I do it, and you can already tell that it's not moving as far, that it has already closed that gap. And that was what, maybe seven, eight pulls? It might take a few more, it might take a few less in your application, but no, that's what's required, is you put the vice grip on the brake arm. Don't take this spring off, don't take this arm off. Make sure you have everything fully loaded with the brake pads, the caliper, and the rotor, and you simply just snap this thing while it's on the car. Now, after we've done that, what we wanna make sure is that the distance or the amount of tension is the same on both sides. We wanna make sure that the piston has come out the same. We want the same adjustments. 
Now, what we're trying to achieve is approximately of an eighth to a quarter of an inch maximum gap between the arm and the stop. There's a stop built into these actual calipers where this brake arm will stop up against. It can't go any further. And what we're trying to achieve here, guys, is roughly, like I said, between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. Look, an eighth would be great. A quarter of an inch is okay, but any more than that, and what's gonna happen is that piston's gonna be inboard or pushed. It's still gonna be in the cylinder too much or in the caliper, and it can give you difficulty in bleeding your brake, but also it could give you a spongy brake feel. So if you have a spongy brake feel after putting these on your car, make sure you check that distance between the arm and the stop to make sure it's between an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch, no more. The adjustment of your parking brake system on your new rear calipers is super easy to do, guys, but it's also critical that you do it right. Once you've done this, you're ready to go ahead and bleed your brakes, go ahead and put your wheels on and go out and enjoy the improved stopping performance you've gotten from either upgrading your rear drums to disc brakes or doing a full disc brake conversion kit on your car. It's super easy. But if you have any questions, guys, give us a call at the 1-800 number shown on the screen or contact us via our website. It's always open, super easy to use at fpautoparts.com. And while you're there, if you need further performance improvements or you need restoration parts for your early American muscle car or truck or even your late model vehicle, say you want it to stop better or go faster, we've got the parts you need there as well. Guys, I appreciate you watching this video and I hope this helps you understand how to adjust your rear calipers if you got the parking brake option. Until next time, keep the hammer down and keep it between the guardrails.